Lord of days. Holy One, ancient of days. Holy One, Here we go. Sing it with me. Sing. I will bless the Lord. Because he's so worthy, God, we bless your name. Say, bless the Lord, all my soul and all. Just with me, be blessed. Here we go. Oh, 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 say, I will bless the Lord. 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 Say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Say, I will bless the Lord. 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 He brought me out I will bless to the Lord. take me in. I will bless so the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord, will bless the Lord at all I times. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I so I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord, will bless the Lord every day. I will bless the Lord. Sing, I will all right, ladies and gents. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Thank you for staying back for AY. I hope that you enjoyed lunch and the fellowship. We are going to get into this special AY. Uh, before I move forward, I would just like for you to quickly bow your heads with me so that we can pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for being a good God. Thank you for being faithful to us this afternoon as we come to lay our testimonies and just let you know how grateful we are for you. I ask that you um, enlighten our hearts and allow that we also will be enlightened and overcome by the words of each other's testimonies. Lord, help this to be an encouraging service so that by the time that we leave here, a lot of us will be strengthened in our faith. Thank you once more. Be with everyone. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. From what I know, this uh, particular program will be a first year at Tabernacle, at least uh, based on how it's labeled, Tabernacle got TNT. Do you guys remember what TNT stands for? Yes. Talent and testimony. So I hope that you are ready not only to participate, but to also enjoy what is going to be put on display for you this afternoon. We're looking forward to all the different individuals who will share. And like I said in a prayer, by the time we leave here, we'll be strengthened by it. At this time, I'm going to ask Sadani to come to lead us into our A motto and pledge so that we can uh, officially get our AY kick started. Happy Sabbath, church family. No, I think we can do very, very much better than that. Happy Sabbath, church family. That's better. That's better. At this time, we, I would like you to stand so we can do our aim, motto, and pledge. So the aim, the Advent message to all the world in my generation. The motto, the love of Christ compels me. And the pledge... Loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the work of the youth ministry of my church, doing all I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. You may be seated. All right, just to give you a quick rundown on how this is going to operate. So obviously we have a number of ministries that help to operate um, the different functions of the church. So different individuals will come up and they will share with you particular testimonies related to those ministries and the work that they are doing. Okay? So you will hear from a variety of people. Um, 
We will go into song service very soon, but right before we do so, um, there's a um, activity that we'll partake in at the end, towards the end. And um, due to conflict, I'm going to have Chris come now to explain it to us so that uh, by the time we get to it, we'll be able to know what it is that we are doing. So Chris is coming up. He'll help us to walk through it so that when we get to the activity, we will know exactly what we're doing. Okay, guys, so stay right here, Maxwood. This is called the name game. So when you guys get ready to play it, it's really fun. What you want to do is be able to remember, it takes your memory, what was the last name said. Now, here are the categories that you can choose from. It could be a person in the Bible, it could be a book of the Bible, or it could be a place, a specific place in the Bible, right? Okay. It actually has to have some type of reference to being a person, a place, or a book in the Bible. Does that make sense? So far, that makes sense, right? Can't be a common noun, right? Has to be proper, okay? So, for example, it's best to learn through actually doing it. If I say Nebuchadnezzar, right, you're picking up from the last letter in the name that I just said, which would be in this situation, R. R. So he's got to think of a person, a place, or a book of the Bible that starts with R. Give me one. Rahab. Rahab. What is the last letter? B. B. So then we go right here. Belshazzar? Okay, Belshazzar, right? What does that end with? R. R. So the whole thing is the more people up here, you got to pay attention, right? Now, here's where the game gets dicey. When you want to say something like water, is, 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 that, a, is that a proper noun? No, no. No, right? Or heaven, is that a proper noun? No. No. No, I don't want to go through that. No, it actually has to. Mm -mm. We are going to, because the, the heaven can be said in m many times, and this is where the game gets complicated, so we want to make sure that we streamline the rules, right? Because Pat Simmons likes to create names sometimes <laughs> that, that nobody ever read in the Bible before, right? Dishibusala. <laughs> what? Where is that found, right? You're going to find Elder Carrington throwing some stuff out there, and because he's Elder Carrington, you're just going to go along with it. Then he's going to win, and technically he should have lost. So you just got to make sure you don't let him say some stuff out here, right? So again, person, right? Place, a specific place, or those books of the what? Bible. Bible. Okay, so the scorekeeper has to be sure to be remembering what every person said, right? I think you also saying about duplicating names. Yeah, you can't duplicate the names, right? So here's the, the, the word that really becomes a, a problem. If you say Yahweh, like for, for Y, W is very hard. I'm just going to tell you that mm -hmm. right now. It's hard to find because everyone wants to say like wilderness, you know, or something like that. So it gets really difficult. Um, so try to stay away from like the Bartholomews where you're going to end up with a W on the end of the name and then the person after you is stuck. Um, Satan is allowed. You know, I understand nobody wants to say that name, but you might get stuck. And Satan's the only one that can come to your mind. Or Jezebel, you know, we're not saying things that are blasphemous up here. We're just trying our best to push through the game. You guys got it? You guys got it? All right, so when it comes time, your scorekeeper, your gatekeeper is going to be Jediah because he plays this quite frequently, and Maxwell. So you got two people to be able to kind of know who's saying what last. And again, the whole point is to forget that someone said that name, and then you're out. Okay? So when you guys play it, it's a lot of fun, but let's make sure it's more fun than competitive than anything else. Yeah? Sounds good. Sounds good. Awesome. All right, sounds good. got 10 seconds because for the sake of time you'll have 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I think that's seconds. I think that's fair. That's it, right? I think so that's very fair. Paying attention and having a name a name in your mind. Yes. Um, how many people can make it five? No, no, no. no. Five, ten, is ten. Short. Ten, five is way too short. 10 is way too short. So 10 seconds. Any other questions? Okay. All right, thank you, Chris. Um I believe when that comes around, that'd be quite a bit of fun. <laughs> I see, I see Sister Simmons smirking already. I know. Yeah, we 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 we're gonna need a biblical dictionary for y'all. <laughs> all right, awesome. So I'm already looking forward to that. Now we are going to get into uh, some songs, song service, but our young people now. 
Uh, for the sake of efficiency and just to streamline things, I'm not going to come up every single time to announce uh, um, who's going to do what. So right after we have our song service, I would love to have Tamara come up to help represent Health Ministry. So right after the song service by our young people, Tamara, you can just come on up to represent the Health Ministry. Yeah. 
Jones from the Health Ministry. On behalf of the Health Ministry, I come to educate, inspire, equip, and provide practical information on how to become God-centered. So set small groups to big um, goals. I'm sorry, set small goals to big goals. Change bad habits to healthy habits in food, health, hygiene, environment, physical, emotional, and psychological awareness. The segment presented is to make you aware. For the past, um, since the beginning of the year, we have basically talked about several topics that we have honed upon, and the purpose of it is to make sure that our ministering is the way of life, and this is our goal as Tabernacle. And one of the things that we added onto the component is our vision center here, and it has been phenomenally um, impacting the lives of others here and also in the community. So far, we have approximately seen 40 people since the beginning of the year, and it's far-reaching and impacting the lives of those we serve. Our health is vital um, as Christians um, and as we basically live a christian filled life. Without our health, we are not equipped to be strong, healthy, or capable to sustain any attack coming our way. Thank you for your support and prayers and undivided attention. Thank you for that, Sister Tamara. Um, at this time, we are going to have the men's ministry, which uh, I'm going to represent. Why, why y'all laugh? Um, I'm going to do a poem. Okay, okay, all right. Y'all didn't know I had poetry in my bag, too. All right, so... This is not an original. Um, this is from unknown. All right, unknown. All right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Come we that love the Lord. And let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. I said, join in a song with sweet accord. And thus, surround the throne. And thus, surround the throne. Oh, I'm marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. I'm marching upward. Not downward, upward to Zion. Beautiful city of God. Thank you. All right, all right. Uh, at this time, we're going to have Brother Richard Bennett, and he's going to come to represent the Sabbath School Department. And right after him, Brother Ray, you're going to have your musical selection. All right, awesome. Good afternoon, church. So I'll be representing the Sabbath School Department. I'll be giving a personal testimony, and I hope that we'll all be blessed. Uh, it was uh, November of uh, 2021, uh, you know, the beginning of November. Uh, but before that, I mean, I, I noticed I started to feel, uh, you know, episodes where I was just feeling weak, and uh, sometimes I would feel as if I was about to faint. You know, I would... Uh, I mean, really weak. Uh, sometimes, like, I, even if I sit down, I feel like I was about to fall out of the chair. And I'm wondering what's going on, you know. And so I decided, you know what, it's time for me to go to uh, the... I, ran, I went to the urgent care. I went to urgent care, and uh, they did, you know, a few tests. And uh, when they were done, they said, you know, you're going to have to go to the emergency room right away. In fact, the doctor was saying that... Uh, because I, I drove to urgent care, but they were saying... We don't even want you to drive to the uh, emergency room. Uh, you know, we're going to call the ambulance. Uh, I mean, I disobeyed, you know. I, I did drive back home because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to get a few, uh, I wanted to change my clothes, you know, so I drove back home. Uh, but I had to sign uh, a document. The doctor, got, you know, let me sign something to say that if I didn't make it, you know, they're not at fault. You know. But uh, thank God, I mean, I was praying all the way. I mean, I didn't, uh, I got back to home safely and I drove from home to the uh, emergency care, and I got there safely. And uh, when I got there, uh, you know, they immediately, they told me that, uh, you know, they need to do surgery. 
So they did the surgery and uh, they did, uh, you know, uh, colonoscopy. Well, that's not really a surgery, but they, they did a procedure. They did a colonoscopy and also an endoscopy. And from that, uh, they said, uh, I'm going to have to do a surgery right away because they saw a mass on my colon. And but they, the, the funny part about it is that the doctor actually said, you know what? I am 100% I am sure that you have cancer. I said, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, cancer. And I said, wow, you know. So, of course, uh, you know, this, was, this is, when, you know, when you get news like this, this is when you really, uh, you, you really know who God is. That's when you're really forced to pray. You know, uh, I think it was Sister White herself who said that sometimes God allows things to come to us so that we can get on our knees. So, you know, I, I, you know, I prayed, and of course my family prayed, you know, my, my, me and my loved ones, and we prayed. I mean, I've never prayed like that before, you know. And so they did the surgery, and after the surgery, um, of course, I was so um, nervous. I mean, you know, you're I'm wondering what's, what's, what's really going on. I mean, I can't, what are they, they uh, I think it's, it's a, the cancer doctor, I think, I think that's an oncologist, I don't know, Dr. Selvin, yeah, the oncologist told me that uh, they're gonna, he's going to start setting me up. You know, they, they started to talk about different options like chemotherapy and all that type of stuff. I said, oh, man, I don't want to hear all of that, you know? So when, anyway, so I kept praying and, you know, you know, and I was automatic on a fast because in the hospital you can't, you can't really eat anything anyway. So it was, it's an automatic fast, and I was praying, praying, praying. And, uh, you know, God is good because, you know, and of course my family members praying, my friends praying, uh, and, you know, then one of the doctors came back and said, you know what, uh, Mr. Bennett, uh, we said that yeah, you had cancer, but uh, there's no sign of cancer. <laughs> I, you know, I know what, I believe that I actually had it and God took it away. You know, we serve a powerful God, brethren. Prayer changes things. I just want to leave that with you, because to, to keep praying, and, and that's, prayer is the most powerful weapon in the universe. God bless you all. Good evening, everyone. When you have a gift, especially something that God has given to you, he don't care whether you like the gift or not. He has given you for a reason, yeah? He's not interested whether you want to use the gift or not. He has given you for a reason. Therefore, when you're given a gift by God, and you all know the gifts that you've been given, use it to praise him. Don't make no excuses. Just use your gift to serve the Lord. And I said this because we had our Sabbath school discussions that, you know, we talk about the life of Jonah, how Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh to, to spread the word. But God said, I want you to go to Nineveh. Jonah said, no. I, I. And he found himself into somewhere near Tarshish, or heading towards Tarshish. And of course, we know the story. He, he, he came out of, of, of the belly of a fish, smelling slimy, and still had to go do the work. So then why resist? Just do it. And, but also the Bible says we not, should not call on to the brethren unawares. We must tell them beforehand. In this case, here goes. This song is a song of each person's heart as we stand before the Lord making excuses as to why we don't do what he says we're supposed to do. And when we uh, finish with all our excuses, we still need to praise the Lord. Yes? Thank you, Lord, for the trials that come my way, that in way I can grow each day as I let you lead. Thank you, Lord, for the patience those trials bring 
in the moments of testing, I can learn to care, but it goes against the way I am to lay my human nature down and let your spirit take control of all I do. For when those trials come, my human nature shows the things to do. And God's soft promptings can be easily ignored. I thank you, Lord, for the patience I feel inside. Knowing that you are there to help and to guide. Thank you, Lord, oh, Lord, that when everything is put in place, out in front I will see your face, and that's where you belong. But it goes against the way I am to lay my human nature down and let your spirit take control of all I do. For when those trials come, my human nature shows the things to do. And God's soft promptings can be easily ignored. And God's soft promptings can be easily ignored. Is it fair to say so far that Tab's got TNT? Talents and testimonies. Thank you for that, Brother Bennett. We are so grateful for what God has done for you. And thank you for that, Brother Raymond, for that beautiful selection. Um, so now, back to back, we are going to have, representing prayer ministry, we're going to have Sister Lucy, who, by the way, celebrated her birthday this week. So... Um, just make sure you get a shout out. She's going to come represent prayer ministry. And then after that, we are to have representing seniors ministry, Sister Cherie Hazel. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right. Come on now. It's my birthday. You have to say it, to say it loud. <laughs> All right, I'm here on behalf of prayer department, prayer ministry. Um, prayer, prayer, prayer. It's been done so much, so much for my life. Um, I, I remember that I was um, giving that testimony and I was talking about the group that I had in the school with me. Um, that semester that we had together, some of us passed and some of us didn't pass. And it was 12 of, of, um, of them that didn't pass um, the test. So they had to repeat the class again. And last, the Tuesday before they were supposed to take um, that exactly the same test, the exit exam. And one of the students went to the chair and ask a question like, oh, which test are we going to take? Is it the 2023 or the 2020? So the chairperson said, that's why you guys, you guys cannot pass because you're looking forward to look for stuff in the internet for you to be cheating and stuff like that. So we're going to change the test. So they send them back home. They didn't give them the test that Tuesday. But last Tuesday, um, they surely made another test, like a brand new one, and gave it to them. So one of my close friends called me. She said, 
I don't know what we're going to do. And she was really stressed out about it. I said, let me tell you something. I've been telling you that before. If you pray, you believe, you trust God, there's nothing that he cannot do. He probably switch it around and to make it better for you guys. And then sure enough, and, um, after they taking the test, I was just like, what's going on? They never text me to say what's going on. And praise the Lord, the whole group passed the test. So I was just... I was just, I praise God. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be selfish just because I passed and they didn't pass. So they called me to pray for them, and I praise God for that. Yeah. Thank you. Quick correction, representing seniors ministry instead of Sister Cherie, we're going to ask Sister English. By the way, the seniors ministry is having a walk in the park tomorrow. So if you're free, make sure you join our vibrant seniors. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. So I didn't have anything planned because when they said talent and what? Testimony. I said, well, I really don't have any talents. But... Um, well, I think I, I praise God for the talent of helping. I try to help best way I can. <laughs> and I like children. I've been with them for half my life. So maybe those are talents and gifts from God, and I thank him. But I sat there and I said, um, yes, I do have a testimony. It's not a testimony. It's just a providential moving of God in my life all these many years. So many things have happened to me that, you know, I took them for granted. Some, of, some I didn't remember, but my siblings often remind me of my little fiascos that happened to me, over, and they joke about it. But when I reflect now, I think back, I said, wow, God really spared my life to see this time because there's so many near misses, and it's the first time that I'm really going to mention these things. Um, some are a little bit funny, but they're not really funny. Um, we lived on a hill in the country, and we, there was a drainage thing to catch water, and there was a barrel, a drum or something. And I was a little baby, the last of six, and my sister was given the task of um, hushing the baby. And for the life of me, I don't know how you're going to hush a baby outside the window over a drum of water. So I fell in the water. So that was a, you know, <laughs> subject of jokes all my life. But thank God somebody saved me. I don't know who did, but I don't remember who saved me. And then another time, my mom left some cornmeal porridge. And for those who know about cornmeal porridge, it retains heat forever. So these five siblings of mine are playing, and there's a table, and they put the porridge to cool. And here I am as a toddler, knowing my porridge is there. I pulled this tablecloth down, and it just splattered all over my stomach. Um, the ladies can come, and I'll show you the scar, not the men. It's still there. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> So now I grow up a little more, and I moved to the city and going to school, high school. And do you know the curb in the city? You walk along this curb, and you show how skillful you are walking. And we're going to the library. And there was a bread company called Purity, and it's, pure, it's a van. They would deliver bread to the different stores. And this van, I'm here on the curb, and the van is driving next to me, and the door, it swung open and hit me in the back, just me. And I fell. I could have easily been hit into the street, but I didn't get hit in the street. Thank God for that. Another incident, when I was a little older, I had my niece in my arms waiting to get a ride home from church. And I'm standing against the church wall, like this. 
and the parking cars are there. And our pastor, Pastor A.D. Lang, God rest his soul, who could hardly drive a stick shift, was a little bit blindish, and I'm standing, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm standing against the wall with my niece, you know, and Pastor Lang got the car in gear, and he took off. He meant to turn, I guess, but for some reason, God had it that, I don't know why I moved out the way like that. And um, Pastor Lane came crashing into the wall where I was standing with my niece. Or is that would have been a double funeral, you know? So all these things that I, you know, they jokingly laugh about, and I myself, I reflected the other day that God spared my life through all these six incidents, and I'm truly grateful. The last thing is that my um, son, PJ, when I was pregnant with him, I was just vomiting after a month, nonstop. I was down to like 96 pounds. So Baldwin came and said, man, when you get out, I'll go have to fatten you up. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't eat anything at all, could not eat. I threw up the Sister Karen you know, this pill, what was it? I forgot the name of it, Coumadin or something to keep keep down the vomiting, I threw that up, threw up everything, threw up, threw up. I was in the hospital six weeks, so um, I told my um, OBGYN, I don't care, take this baby, I don't care. <laughs> you know, and I was ready because I could not even brush my teeth. I couldn't comb my hair. I was just weak, just vomiting, vomiting. And believe me, Dr. English was her name. She said, Miss English, give it until tomorrow. And believe me, brethren, the following morning when I woke up, all of the vomiting disappeared. And I never felt nauseous from that day forward. And PJ was spared and saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> But through all of this, I, as you may imagine, these are incidents that God saved me from. And I thank God for that. And I hope that I will indeed live out the purpose for which God called me. And I thank you all for listening and sharing with me. For someone who came up to say they had no talent or testimony, they sure blended the two of them well together. Um, if you know Sister English, you know she's, I'm just going to say, she's one of the funniest people at Tabernacle, okay? Um, so we thank you, Sister English, for all these, how do you call it, fiascos <laughs> that happened that, hit, that allowed you to be here. And for PJ, we're glad that PJ is also here. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, we're going to have a uh, singles ministry. Now, this young lady who's uh, representing singles ministry came up earlier to represent health ministry. So I guess you can say she's a healthy single. Put them, Y'all like that? And then after her, <laughs> after her to represent our couples, uh, soulmates, we're going to have the Cummings, uh, Sister Dominique and Brother Harold Cummings. Happy Sabbath again. <laughs> come one, come all, so long as you fall within these categories. Be single, 18 to 104 years old. All are welcome. Come worship and mingle through praise, fellowship, outings, food, laughter, seeking lasting relationship through Jesus' love. Come join us to learn more of the unconditional love of God individually and how he sustains me in you daily. Don't believe the stigma in this ministry. I don't come to serve the Lord. I come to serve the Lord, not to seek any of you. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied every groan. Long as I live, I live when troubles will not rise. I'll hasten onto his throne. That was my poem.
sorry, quick correction. I'm gonna have Brother Shad Henry come up and then after that, the Cummings will come up. All right, so I've heard everybody giving their testimonies. I shall give my testimony as well, but through song. All right, I haven't done a song in like 30 years, so I don't even know if I know the lyrics, but you will sing along with me nevertheless, because I think that the chorus is pretty catchy, so bear with me. And if I ask my daughter to turn it up, do not be dismayed. All right, so go ahead, Jordan. There we go. I don't know what's playing in the background, that's not me. Again, this song is entitled Testimony. This is my, this is my testimony and I'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything he's done, just what he's done to end them for me. I A secret about this guy that I know And every single thing I say is not a lie or a joke See, he was born years ago, way back in the 80s Back when Ronald Reagan was president And crack was so crazy Back when Michael Jackson's thriller was on top of the chart When beatboxing was considered both a skill and an art Back when the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome Became more than an acronym in many people's homes So yes, this boy was born in the heart of the hood Raised by a little a lady who worked as hard as she could to keep him and his older brothers from getting into trouble and since there was no father around her work was double and man was it a struggle at time no lights and water on top of all of that his mother gave birth to a daughter but through it all god had something planned for his life that could only come from overcoming adversity and strife right. this is my this is my testimony and i'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything He's done just what he's done to and done for me. I can't keep it to myself. This is my, this is my testimony, and I'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything he's done just what he's done to and done for me. I can't speak for no one else. Now, a year before the age of eight, this young man began. Another child of the state Yes, he was taken from his family Placed in the foster home And like a lynx without a compass He felt lost and alone Ice cold like frost to the bones Surrounded by total strangers With most of his family conscious His little sister and anger remain But one day he come to understand That this whole experience Was an integral part of God's plan For his life And at that time he didn't know it But someday he looked back And would be thankful for that moment When Jehovah was that and change his environment Placing them with people who through love would inspire him Sometimes just like a vitamin Our trials and tribulations are all pills to swallow And may even shake our faith But the Lord will never give us any more than we can tolerate So don't get it twisted like being a day short and a dollar late This is my, this is my testimony And I'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything he's done Just what he's done to and done for me I This is my testimony and I'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything he's done Just what he's done to and done for me, I can't speak for no one else Now let me 
tell you a secret, you see that guy was me I grew up in the hood living in poverty No lights, food or Christmas wasn't odd for me Hustle in the shop, lifting was a job for me And I remember going to school with holes in the soles of my sneakers And sometimes my toes were exposed My father was long gone before I was ever born But that's alright because I still grew strong And I learned how to navigate this world from all my heroes Walking like I talk it like I'm hanging with the Migos This life we're living is very similar to a free throw You'll only get better at it if you practice and see those heavenly things like love, faith, patience, and ethos, perseverance, and tolerance. People are all equal. Honor, respect, hard work, passion will help you reach those heights, stereotypes, and statistics. Oh, yes, I beat those. This is my, this is my testimony, and I'm gonna tell the whole wide world everything he's done, just what he's done to and done for me. I can't keep it to myself. This is my. This is my testimony and I'm gonna tell The whole wide world everything he's done Just what he's done to and done for me I can't speak for no one else Th Ooh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you I was feeling that, thank you <laughs> Back in the day, that was CNS. Shad and Corey. Okay. We are here representing Soulmates Couples Ministry. Um, just be before we say a little poem. Um, you want to say something about marriage? I'll say marriage is like a wheel. You, you know a wheel? It, it's, it, can, it can roll, right? Now cut the wheel in half. Can it still roll? No. So therefore it takes two halves, two halves to keep the wheel of marriage rolling. It needs somebody else in that marriage as well. And that person is? Jesus. It is not enough just to you see. To complete his plan, there must be three. As husband and wife, you complete your love with sacred vows and the Lord above. If together you will both kneel and pray with sincere hearts as you end each day. And in all you do, if you put him first, he'll meet your needs and quench your thirst. It's not enough just to see you. To complete, to complete this marriage, it takes, it takes three, all three. All three. And the third person is? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. So we encourage all the married couples, all the engaged couples, all the dating couples. Put Jesus first. Amen, right. And you will have smooth sailing. So our testimony is when we went to premarital counseling, um, our counselors were excellent, and they told us realistically that uh, the honeymoon phase only lasts about 12 months, and then after that, the reality will set in, and then you'll stop being lovey-dovey, and you'll stop. you just become blasé. And we were like, Mm -mm. This is our second turn around the sun, and we're going to do it different. So we promised each other that we would always be on a honeymoon. Amen. And we will always hold hands, and we'll just continue to be lovey-dovey with each other. And it is my testimony that is the best thing that ever happened since sliced bread. And I will say, I, I give God the glory. I give God the glory. And please, um, friends, it always, you always need Jesus Christ. Don't care what, you can avoid a problem, you know? You don't, want, you don't have to get an argument. That doesn't have to happen. But you must pray every single day. Ask God to keep your tongue under control. And with God's help, you'll see. You'll avoid a lot of problems. Amen. The words that you don't say can never hurt. That's right.
if you've been around the Cummings, you know, it's pretty much a game of ping pong of mi corazón, mi vida. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, one one time they came up and they shared how the romance started. I think somebody blocked somebody or something. Yeah, I heard that I blocked my crush. It's been two years. <laughs> Hasn't worked out that way for me, so it doesn't work for everybody. Um, so we're going to get into a game of Kahoot. I know you've enjoyed uh, the talents and uh, testimonies. I do want to say, even as we get into some of the act other activities. If while you are hearing other people share testimonies or share talents, there's something on your heart, you feel inspired to share something, just let me know, I'm on the side there, just let me know and we'll make sure that we give you a chance to be able to share it, whether it's a song or poem, whatever it is. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of people that you didn't know had certain talents, but expose them. A lot of people probably didn't even know about CNS, that Shad had, this ability to not just write his own songs, make his own music, produce everything you heard, that was him. He did all that. So uh, there were very, very talented people here at Tabernacle. So um, at this time, if you can pull up the Kahoot for us on the screen, pull out those devices. I'm sorry? Where are the kids? That is a good question. Dana Adventurers. Do we want to proceed without them or? You want them to be part of it? Okay. I'm sorry? This is true. Code.it. Code.it. The IT, then the number that you see there that is the user, uh, the game ID, sorry, and you can input that, put your name, keep the names, uh, you know, Christian approved, Jesus approved, and once everybody is in, then we will begin. Those who are not able to see the screen, the ID is 283-6479. 283-6479. We are happy to have Frederick Douglass in the Kahoot game. Still logging in, please let me know so we can give you some more time. Somebody said they're still logging in. Yeah. Let me see, what do we have? We have, oh, my eyes going bad. We have West, we have Rel, the winner. All right, somebody calling that shot early. Uh, Mrs. Young, Jay, Jada, okay. Charlie, Sadani, WJ, Frederick Douglass. Uh, maybe Harry Tubman gonna join us too. Lovey Dovey, Player One, and THC. All right, anybody else still logging in? All right. Are well, you still logging in? The, how many of you know I, I, I have a talent of doing impressions? You guys knew that? All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do the impression, and I'm gonna let you guess who the impression is of. Okay? All right, it's very quick. Don't blink, you might miss it. All right. <clears throat> Almighty God.
<laughs> all right, so we all knew that one. <laughs> that is our very own Dr. Carrington. All right, anybody else? Are we ready? We ready? All right, seems like we're ready. All right, let us begin. We have, do we have anybody up there to, um, like, you know, click start? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Thank you, PJ. All right, here we go. Oh, you're a little too late, my dear. Two, eight, three, six, four, seven, nine. All right, here we go. Who did Abraham descend from? Abel, Japheth, Shem, or Cain? Abel, Japheth, Cain, or Shem. Who did Abraham descend from? All right, our answers are in the right answer was Shem, the third son of Noah. All right, let's go to question two. All right, who do we have on top? Okay, Rel, and player one, followed by Mrs. Man, my eyes are going bad. All right, let's go to question two. Lucifer rebelled and became known as Satan, which means, what does Satan mean? Does it mean tempter, evil, liar, or adversary? All right. The correct answer is adversary. Satan means adversary, all right? Leaderboard, rail, still at the top. Next. Chosen by God to be king as a boy. Was that Josiah, Saul, David, or Samuel? That was quick. Y'all answered quick. All right, the correct answer was David. Uh oh. Now y'all saying the game cheating, huh? The game cheating. The game cheating. <laughs> Rel is still at the top. <laughs> Next. <laughs> what does disciple mean? What does disciple mean? Follower, pupil, uh, ruler, messenger. Okay. The majority of people said follower. That is correct. All right. Real is still at the top, followed closely by SD the best. Next. How many chapters does Revelation have? Okay. Three, seven, 40, or 22. How many chapters does Revelation have? All right, the correct answer was 22, and the majority have picked that. Rel is widening the lead. Next. Who was the last king of Judah? I don't lie, I don't know that one. Zeb, what, Zebedee? Jeho, who? Zedekiah, Zelda? The video game? I'm not gonna lie, I don't know that one. Zedekiah. Okay. By the way, pay attention to some of these names. You might need them in the name game. 
All right. Next. Abraham. How old was Abraham when his son Isaac was born? All right. For those who are in Sabbath school, my Sabbath school this morning, we should know this. 21, 103, uh, 100, or 89. We know he was a young man, <laughs> according to Bible numbers. All right, the correct answer was a hundred. Very well, very well. Okay, West and Jada are now on the top three, fought with uh, Rel. Who was Cyrus? Okay, y'all gonna have to read that by yourself. Cyrus. Who was Cyrus? Cyrus. All right, answers are in. He was the first king of the Persians and the Medes. Cyrus. Next. Okay, Rel is widening the lead. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Matthew was a doctor, fisherman, historian, tax collector. All right, answers came in very quickly on this one. And the majority of you say tax collector, which is correct. Next. All right. The top still looking the same. Rel is on fire. Somebody say Rel got the answers. Revelation was written by... John, Paul, Moses, or James, who was who wrote the book of Revelation? Who wrote the book of Revelation? All right, John is the correct answer. John the Revelator. That is correct. Let's go next. Who did Elisha heal of leprosy? Who did Elisha heal of leprosy? Uh, Elijah, Naaman, the sister from Shunem, or Gehazi? Who did Elisha heal? And answers are in Naaman, the Syrian army commander. That is correct. Next. All right, Rail is still at the top. Let's see who's going to make a run for it. Uh, what disciple walked on water? Paul, Matthew, Peter, or Andrew? What disciple walked on water? All right, answers are in. It was our very own Peter. That is correct. Okay. Next. What did, Abra what did Abraham sacrifice instead of Isaac? Again, if you're in my service school, we talked about it this morning. A chicken, a goat, a lamb, or a ram? I think it was chicken. I think. Don't take my word for it, though. It was a ram. A ram caught in a thicket. All right. Rail maintaining the lead, wire to wire. Um, who was known to be the wisest king? Josiah, Solomon, Hezekiah, or David, the wisest king. All right. 
Solomon was the correct answer, and uh, most of us got that correct. Oh, all right, the winner. The winner. Where you at? The winner. The winner. Uh, come on, the winner. All right. You got like five questions. The winner. Uh, scripture says Enoch. Who? Okay. Died young, walked with God. Uh, Charge angels, destroy royalty. So what does the Bible say about Enoch? Enoch. Enoch walked with God and was not. All right. Next. Okay. Seems like the winner wants to make a run. Oh. All right. Next. After Elijah was taken into heaven, what did Elisha do? Okay. Held his clothes and tore them in two. Held his clothes and well, wailed to the ground and mourned for Elijah. What did Elisha do after Elijah was taken to heaven? The correct answer was held his clothes and tore them in two. Ooh, the winner dropped two spots. Rail is still in the lead. Next. Which of these did not happen to Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, Ate grass like an ox, hair grew like feathers of an eagle, teeth turned sharp as a feral creature, and nails became a bird like claws. Which of these did not, that's the key word, not happen? Did not happen. All right, the correct answer was teeth turned sharp as a feral creature. So that did not happen to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, oh, okay. The winner jumped right back up to number two. As we draw near to the finish line, the worst king in Israel was Ahab, Josiah, Hezekiah or Manasseh? Who was the worst? Ah, who was the worst? Ahab? Okay. I was thinking Manasseh as well, but Manasseh did repent. So Ahab was the worst. Rail. Maintaining the lead. Oh, wait, what happened to the winner? <laughs> Where the winner at? <laughs> All right, next. All right, two questions left. Revelation means what? Revelation means what? To unveil, to read, to understand, it means to write. What does revelation mean? What does revelation mean? To unveil, to unveil, to unveil. All right, man, one more question. Is rail going to go to wire to wire? All right. How did God use Cyrus? How did God use Cyrus to judge the Jews, to tax the Jews, to make the Jews powerful, or to allow the Jews to return to Jerusalem? How did God use Cyrus? The correct answer is to allow the Jews to return to Jerusalem. That was how God used Cyrus, the first king of the Persians and the Medes. All right, let's see our final scores. A podium. At number three, we have Lovey Dovey. Who was Lovey Dovey? Okay, okay. Sister Dominique W was who? 
Okay. And then we have Rail, who went wire to wire. I don't think she missed the question. But is that you, Sherelle? She did it all while taking care of twins, guys. <laughs> she did it all while breastfeeding one and flipping the other one in the air. So thank you, Sherelle, for your participation. You have a gift for her? Okay. Yeah, I should have played. <laughs> All right, your gift is coming, uh, Sherelle, from Dane. For all three? Okay, so it was Sherelle, Sister D, and Jediah, right? All right, Dania has your cadeau. If y'all don't get y'all gift after AY, go to her. All right, so we all gonna get into the name game right before we do so. I want to have this, yes. I want to have this young man come up and perform for us his talent. Uh, I said this young man because he shares my name and I don't want to give him the spotlight on my name. So a young man is gonna come up. No, 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 his name is Max. <laughs> Max Villagene is going to come up and perform for us. Please give him your attention.
say his name because we share the same name even though I don't have that particular talent so thank you Max he's performing here before and we're looking forward to him performing again and to continue to use his talent um, for God like uh, brother Raymond said earlier sometimes God gives you a gift God doesn't really care if you like the gift or not <laughs> it's for us to be good stewards of our gifts so we're just thankful that our Many people here at Tabernacle who use their gifts to serve the Lord. Uh, we're going to go into our name game. Um, Chris explained it earlier for us, but for those who are not here, just a quick run through. So it's pretty simple. All right. So we are going to name persons, places, and books of the Bible. And the key is if I start and I say a name, like for example, I say Peter. The last letter of Peter is R. And Sadani is next. You would say Rahab. And Rahab ends with a B. So the next person will have to find a person, place, or book in a Bible that starts with a B. So better, Derek, what would you say? I know, I just put you on the spot. <laughs> Bethlehem, right? So you get it. We are about 10 individuals, about 10 individuals, and then we'll, you know, shift around. But the key is that you cannot duplicate names, okay? And now you have 10 seconds to come up with your name. All right, you have 10 seconds. So we need 10 individuals. Don't be shy. 10 individuals. You can come up. You can come up. Uh, Jediah is going to keep score. He's a pro at this. He knows how to do it. So we have one, two, three, four. I don't know, you guys are so shy. Two more. Two more. Two more. 
not the slick. She know I'm gonna call her. She got the baby. <laughs> So we can start on that end. So remember, place, person, or book. And it has to be a proper noun. All right? So it can be like wilderness. Right? It has to be a proper noun. So we're going to work down the line. Okay? So remember, from the last letter. Hezekiah, Haman, Nebuchadnezzar, oh. Rahab, that's them, Moses, Simon, no, oh yeah, Nineveh. Abraham. Moses. Oh, already yeah. said. Oh, already said. What are you talking about? She already said Moses. Wait, what are you talking about? The last letter in the word. So what's the last word? She said Abraham. She said Abraham. Yes. Yes. But I said Nineveh. Nineveh ends with an H. Yeah. I said, I thought. So that was a try and run. Try and run. Okay, try and run, try and run. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> 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 Alright, go ahead, Sister D. Belshazzar. Rahab. Bethlehem. I just said. I said that. You got 10 seconds, Sean. Oh, hell. M. M. Moab. Lineage? Oh, oh, no. What did you say? Lineage. Lineage? No, lineage. Lineage. L? Levi. Isaac. Christ. Timothy. Hezekiah. Haman. Nebuchadnezzar. Rachel. Lazarus. Samuel. Okay. Leviticus. Okay. Cornelius. Huh? What? <laughs> what? Pause. <laughs> what is that? Cornelius. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. I did not know that was, you could do that. Uh, 
Trent will be out in this yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. And Sister D would be out in this instance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So do I just give a, a random name or do I have to yeah, do it? Yeah, you can start it off with whatever okay. you want. So this um, is a new round. So, we can't so quick question. New, hmm? uh, do, yeah. do the names reset or? Are you ready? Yeah. Genesis. First Samuel. Leviticus. Simeon. Nahum. Who? Oh, Nahum, Nahum. Um, Moses. Samaritan. Nazareth. Haman. 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 So that's another N. You guys love these N's. Um, I'm going to go back to what? Nineveh. Habakkuk. King David. King David. Hold on, hold on. What, what, what do you say, Sister Simmons? Wait. Damascus. Hmm? Damascus. Yes. Damascus. Sinai. Mong Sinai. Sinai. Okay. Sinai. Okay. Isaac. Um, C? No. Um, Isaac. Canaan. Stop, stop. You want, you want, you want. That's not about what character? There's no Liam in the, in, in the Bible? Huh? Not even Liam Neeson? <laughs> what? Okay, I'm out. There's no Liam, L-I-A-M? No, L I A M, Liam. It's not in the Bible? It is. It's in the Bible, right? L I A M. Eliam? So you say Eliam is in the Bible. So I read the Bible in the message version. They took out the E. Okay. It's, bro, I could have sworn. It's not in there? They say Eliam is in there. Wow. 
Okay, I'm out. <laughs> Lion? Lion? Lamentation. Syria. Abraham. Methuselah. Hades? Hades, yeah, Hades. Simeon. Mm -hmm. M? Mark. N? N. Nahum. He's okay, okay. Um, Manessa. Hannah. Hannah. Okay, Samson. Okay. Did they say Nivea? Did we say Nivea already? Okay, Niv N um, wait, Nineveh? My bad, Nineveh. Nineveh? Nineveh? Nineveh. Hebrew. It's a new round, right? Yeah. Lamentations. Samuel. What's it? L. What is L? Luke. Elijah. Habakkuk.
King Solomon. Naaman. Nehemiah. Hosea. Abel. Laban. Ezra, E, right? E? H? H. Oh. Heaven. That's a place. Okay, okay. That's a place in the Bible. Right. Okay. All right. All right, so start over. Okay, um, so we're starting over uh, the book of Matthew. <laughs> Woman at the well. Lazarus. Simon. Nehemiah. Habakkuk. King Ahab. Belshazzar. Rahab. Boaz. All right, all right. Zechariah. Hezekiah. Hosea. Herod. Daniel. Lamentation. Samuel. Laban. Nicodemus. Sarah. Um, Hezekiah. <laughs> What's the letter? Hosea. Abraham, Moses, um, Satan, <laughs> Nabin, I mean Nabal, <laughs> Leviticus. We have S again. <laughs> Saul. <laughs> Levi. Isaiah. I'm going to fall on the same sword and say heaven. <laughs> Wait, so I have H? I have N? Um, hmm. That's a new round, Nicodemus. <laughs> Samson. Noah. Hezekiah. Hosea. Abel. Levi. Isaac. Cain. <laughs> Nahum. What's the last word? M. Messiah.
Habakkuk. First and second kings. Um, Samuel. I forfeit. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, L. 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 Lazarus. Satan. Nicodemus. Solomon. Nahum. Moses. Seth. Herod. David. Daniel. <laughs> Lazarus. Saul. Um, Lamentations. Samuel. Yes. Simon. Nebuchadnezzar. Um, Rahab. Bartholomew. <laughs> Women at the well. Lazarus. Yes. Samson. Nicodemus. Uh, Simeon. Nahum. Malachi. Ishmael. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Levi. <laughs> Isaiah. Hezekiah. Hebrews. Yes. Uh, Song of Solomon. Uh, Nazareth. Uh, Habakkuk. King Ahab. Bartholomew. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> Please give a hand to Jediah and Sadani and Roger, who, you know, he's, you know, he listened to his wife. So he get the Gentleman Award. All right, thank you, Jediah. Uh, do we also have a prize for the winner? Of the, okay, all right. So if you won today, you receive a prize. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we have a quick quiz. Okay, so how did, um, I mean, you iPhone users. Uh, Sister Simmons, I might need you. I don't use iPhone. So we're going to do a quick quiz, and we're going to have a uh, musical selection, and that will be near our wrap-up. <clears throat> All right, thank you. All right. All right, so we have 10 questions. I'm going to divide the church in two, okay? Team one, team two, all right? So team one, I'm going to ask you the odd-numbered questions. Team two, I'm going to ask you the even-numbered questions. At the end, the team with the most answers wins. All right? Sounds good? 
Just whoever, yeah, whoever has the answer on that side, you can answer the question, okay? <clears throat> All right, so team one. After Jesus died, what supernatural event took place? Was it the veil of the temple was torn into, there was an earthquake, Graves were open and many dead people rose and went into the city or all of the above? That is correct. All of the above. All right. So team one got one point. Team two, are you ready? All right. So team two, what did the soldier who was watching Jesus respond to the events that happened at his death? What did the soldier who was watching Jesus respond to the events that happened at his death? Was it that we are not told what he did? Was it that they were greatly afraid? Was it that they were swallowed up in the earth and died? Or was it that he said, truly, this was the Son of God? The last one? That is correct. All right, one one. Team one, back to you. Which psalm gives a first-person account of the crucifixion? Which psalm gives a first-person account of the crucifixion? Is it Psalm 23, Psalm 117, Psalm 119, or Psalm 22? Psalm 22. Psalm 22? Psalm 22? Yeah. All right, that is correct. All right, two points for side one. Team two, who owned the tomb where Jesus was buried? Was it Joseph of... Yeah. <laughs> that word. English is my third language, y'all. Uh of Arimathea, Mary Magdalene, Nicodemus, or Simon the Cyrenian? Joseph of, all right, very well. So 2-2. Two, two. Team 1, in what language was the superscription written that was placed above Jesus that said, Jesus, the King of the Jews? So, the sign they put above Jesus' head. In what language was it written? Was it Greek, Hebrew, Latin, or all the above? Sister Gail, you said all the above? All right, correct. Very well, three, two. All right, team two. <laughs> Jesus walked on what body of water? On which body of water did Jesus walk? Was it the Pacific Ocean? No, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> Jesus walked on what body of water? All right, here are the real answers. The Dead Sea, the Caspian Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, or the Sea of Galilee? Man, you guys, y'all come to Sabbath school, huh? Very good. All right, team one. Out of what woman had Jesus cast seven demons? Out of what woman had Jesus cast seven demons? Rhoda, Margaret, Martha, or Mary Magdalene? Mary Magdalene. Very well. Uh, team two. What was, oh, this one's easy. What was the occasion for Jesus turning water into wine? A bar mitzvah, a, pa a Passover, a quinceanera, a funeral, or a wedding? I have to, I have to try and throw y'all off a little bit. Uh, uh, very good, very good. All right, team uh, one, this is your last question. What tree did Jesus cause to wither? Uh, what tree did Jesus cause to wither? All right, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, team two, team two, team two. This is your last question. You got to get this. You got to get this. In what city did 
Did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? Was it Bethesda, Capernaum, Nazareth, or Bethany? Think about it. Bethesda, Capernaum, Nazareth, or Bethany? Think about it, team two. Think about it. Bethesda, Capernaum, Nazareth, or Bethany? Y'all know, know this. Y'all know it. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Bethany. So we do have a two-way tie. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, all right. The, the team that can accurately guess my height gets the win. So wait, 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 wait. Team one will get a shot at it, and team two will get a shot at it. So team two, who can accurately guess? <laughs> who can act? Five, nine? Who can accurately guess my... <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was trying. <laughs> All right, team one, what's your guess? 5'11". Well, I heard 5'11", 6'2". What, what the... Y'all yeah, going 5'11"? So, well, hold on now. I'm hearing different answers. I hear 5'11", I hear 6'2", I hear... So what, y'all going 5'11 or 6'2"? 5'11". <laughs> team 2, what y'all going with? You going to 6? 5'12"? Y'all doing 5'12 or 6? <laughs> Alright, it is 6. On Sabbath, I'm 6'3". All right. So thank you so much for your participation. Uh, we are going to have Jonathan with a selection on the piano as he come up. I really just want to thank you guys for your participation. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I enjoyed myself. Hopefully this is not the last time we have Tab Got TNT. And next time we have even more testimonies and talents. And we'll be able to enjoy ourselves just the same. So... Please turn your attention to Jonathan, and we'll come back at the end to close it out.
Amen. That is wonderful, 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 wonderful. It is such a blessing to have our young people play hymns. Lord, what a lost art. But Jonathan, you blessed our hearts. Continue learning them. They're good for the soul. All right. All right, all right. So this is impromptu, so forgive me if I mess up. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this is going to be interactive. Um, this week, I've been working on and I've been studying about the power of the tongue. And I have been tremendously convicted and the verses that I found in the Bible. Now, I'm going to ask someone to read for me Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Eighteen Proverbs eighteen verse twenty one. Uh huh. The tongue has the power of life and death. We usually stop there, but the verse continues. Those who love it, some 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 translations say, who indulge in it, with, will eat his fruit and bear its consequences. And when I read that this week, I was like, whew, my tongue is making me eat a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I realized something. And another place, I think it's Matthew 6, it says, um, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So then I started thinking, if my tongue has power of life and death, and if I speak out of the abundance of my heart, that means what's coming out of my tongue is coming straight from my heart. Who, Jesus. My goodness. And then the Bible says in another verse, can clean and dirty water come out of the same fountain? And the answer in the Bible says, no. So what comes out of my mouth reflects what's in my heart. And if my heart is dirty, what comes out of my mouth is dirty. Listen, if I, use, if I were not converted, thank you God, he cleansed my mouth many, many, many years ago. But if he hadn't done that yet, and I had read that, that would be the last time I would cuss. Because if I say something that is destroying and is not building and giving life, it's not of God. So the way we talk to our children, remember, uh, be aware, parents, that the words we speak unto our children are either of life or my goodness. I'm, I have a friend who's seven years old who's still remembering her parents calling her all kind of dirty names. She has three doctorates and she still doesn't feel worthy. And I have to tell her, don't listen to that old voice. Listen to the voice of God who took you from dirt and gave you three doctorates. And you are above and beyond good. The words that we speak to our children now, they hear and they listen and they get engraved on their hearts. The words we speak to our friends, the way we speak to strangers, the way we speak to our subordinates at work. These words have power. Power. God created the whole word, the whole world with words. Just words. The only one he dirty is his, he dirty his hand with is men. But everything else was you, 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 done. So imagine the power our words have over the people of, of our circle, the people that we have influence on. So just to 
conclude this short thought. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. But out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak. And clean and dirty water cannot come from the fountain of my heart. So let's ask God to clean the fountain of our hearts so that out of the abundance of a clean heart, clean words will come out. And then the power of life will be in our tongue. May God bless all of us. Amen. Impromptu, but spirit-led. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your participation once more. Uh, I've enjoyed myself very much. I believe that you have as well. I believe that you have been blessed. Um, <laughs> next week again? Okay. All right. Well, you're a host. <laughs> now I'm here with you. Uh, we want to thank Sister Simmons and her team, the personal ministry team, for putting this together um, just to allow us to have this kind of AY. Like I said, hopefully this is not the last time. So that means you have to get involved. Come, let them know what it is that you want to do, what testimony that you have, and just allow him to get involved. Uh, as Sister Simmons comes up, um, we will pray to close. Make sure that you get your gift from Danielle, your prizes. <laughs> Here she comes now in the back. Oh, you want them to come up? All right, so uh, Sherelle, Sister D, and Jadaya. Well, it looks like we should uh, come up. Who else? There was somebody else. Oh, it was him both times. Yeah, it was Jadaya both times. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so very much. We're going to be hitting the road on June 8th. We'll be going out into our community again, and we'll be handing out books and magazine and praying for people and talking with people who like that. It's supposed to be every hand. Yeah, we had a great time the last time. Thank you so very much, Maxwood. I can always call on this gentleman, and he's always so willing, and I give God praise for him. And it's been for years. Thank you. All right, praise God. So we're going to pray. If you please stand with me. All right. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this AY. Uh, Lord, it feels good to fellowship with one another. Uh, it feels good to be in your presence and enjoy your presence. So many times our Sabbaths go by in a blur. But we thank you that today we're able to rest into it. Lord, I pray that the testimonies that were said today, the interactions, will be valuable to us and enriching to our souls. Thank you for the Vesper talk. And I pray, Lord, that even as we leave this place today, that we will be um, encouraged to share words of life with one another. Words of life with our family members, our friends, our coworkers, classmates, etc that will find value in lifting people up rather than tear them down with our words, oh God. Thank you for all the words that you have given us that we can replace the old negative narratives with. So many of us still struggle, even as adults, with things that were said to us as children. So I pray, God, that you'll cast away every negative thought, every negative word that was said and replace it with your truth. Continue to Heal us and build us up, not only us individually, but this church. And as we um, spend the rest of the Sabbath, please continue to be with us. Bless every family represented here, every family represented in the church. In your name I do pray, amen. Yes, uh, so there is a important business meeting taking place next week, next week, next week. So please make sure that you are in attendance. Uh, very important business meeting. And tomorrow, the seniors will be walking at the park. Well, what is the time? Did you say what the time was? What's the time, Sister Merez? Okay. So stay in tune with the seniors ministry and their leaders. They will um, give you all their information. Um, any other announcements? If not, 
Oh, yes. Treasure Key Weekend. Pure Reality Treasure Key Weekend. Going back to the format of Friday night and Saturday morning and the Treasure Key Ceremony. So come prepared to be blessed by the Pure Reality Ministry.